Let's get to it, Guardian. You're not brave. Give me a sec. Pre-order and get open beta early access. Hey everyone, this is Paris. I'm back with another video. And wow, a lot of Destiny 2 news today just dropped from Bungie.net and from IGN with their IGN first with the second in the series of videos that they're doing. So let's just jump right into this. First up, Destiny 2 beta this week at Bungie. Deej finally detailed exactly what we can expect from the beta, which is starting on July 18th for early access for PlayStation owners, July 19th early access for Xbox owners, and then just the complete open beta on July 21st for anyone. Now, PC users, you'll have to wait till some point in August. They've not given us that exact date yet, but PC won't get their beta until August. So, first up, what can we expect? Homecoming, which is that opening mission that I got to play at the Destiny 2 reveal in E3. We're also going to get to jump into PvP and play the countdown mode. We're also going to be able to do some classic control. And then as far as the strike goes, which I also got to play at the Destiny 2 reveal, will be the Inverted Spire, which was a lot of fun to play. You guys are going to have a blast with that. And we're going to get to try out all the new subclasses. The Dawnblade for the Warlock, Arc Strider for the Hunter, and the Sentinel Titan. And... On July 23rd, for one hour, it sounds like it's going to be a giant stress test. They want everybody on 10 a.m. Pacific on July 23rd to go visit the farm. And they're going to try and see how many people they can squeeze into the farm at once. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Also, it looks like uh, we're going to have matchmaking uh, for the strike. So if you're a solo player, you jump in, it'll be able to matchmake you up with a couple other people. I would assume we'll also have some matchmaking on PvP side as well. So my opinion dive in guys have fun with this trust me when i tell you i loved having the opportunity to play destiny 2 early and you guys are going to have a blast playing that new strike and like i said pvp is going to be a little different this time you're going to be kind of hey this isn't playing like i'm used to playing the crucible so it'll, it'll take you a match or two to get used to it with the longer time to kill and all the other stuff but once you do it's going to be a lot of fun and that homecoming mission you know, while it's not like super hard or anything, it'll give you a nice cinematic feel for the direction of where they're trying to take Destiny 2, you know, with the Red Legion and Gary and everything else that comes with that. So look forward to all that stuff coming on July 18th, PlayStation Early Access. Now, Deej also went into what we cannot expect in the Destiny 2 beta, and all this makes a lot of sense to me. There's not going to be any clan support, which again, they're trying to keep all that stuff until we get to the retail release. There's not going to be any character progression, but you will have some loot drops, it sounds like, uh, in there. But none of that stuff is going to carry over. None, nothing that you do in the beta is going to carry over to the actual final version on September 6th, except we are getting that emblem. They are going to give us a Destiny 2 beta emblem, which you'll be able to show, which will be similar to what we had um, with the original Destiny beta, where we got that emblem and you were able to display it. So we get to look forward to that. I cannot wait until July 18th. My plan is I will be jumping on at 10 a.m. Pacific with my son. We're going to be streaming on Twitch. I'm going to do some gameplay capture. I'll probably have all my impressions and everything after the beta is over, but I'm super excited about this starting up and being able to deep dive into the beta, which brings me to the next point. Luke Smith dropped a bomb, in my opinion, on what we can expect in Destiny 2 on the PvE side, and I'm going to let him say it. The difficulty, certainly at the pinnacle level of the game, we've tried to make a much tougher game that if you think of your weapons and items as a golf bag we want you to look into your golf bag before you start an activity and go like oh what should we bring to this um, because for some of those activities you're going to be loadout locked once they start which means you can't change folks locked loadouts in activities 
the possibilities of this, my mind has been racing all morning after listening to that because it it opens up so many things. Let's just start with the raid, for example. So there can be there can be options in the raid now, and 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 I really think they wouldn't do this for normal mode, but I could see challenge mode or hard mode raid where you have to go in with a certain loadout and you're locked into it for the entirety of whatever section you are in of that raid. You know, like, like when you fight Gary, for example, at the end, I'm assuming, you know, you go into that encounter, you have to pick your weapons and you're locked into that, which is going to create so many possibilities in a six man fire team, because now we can have like, you know, as, as a team leader, you can specify, all right, I need you to come in with your sniper. I need you to have the auto rifle. I need you to switch to the subclass. It's really going to nail down and specify the way that we start playing the game with these these locked loadouts and certain activities. So like I said, I assume the raid will be one of them. Nightfall to me seemed like a no brainer to be able to do that. And maybe which is something else that we got a chance to look at some of these treasure maps and uh, lost sectors. Maybe there's certain scenarios in that where you have to go in with locked loadouts. I love the fact that Luke is detailing that. Sure. Destiny 2 is going to be for everyone. We want everyone to jump in. But when you start getting to those in-game activities, they want to ramp up the difficulty. They don't want this to be easy when you get to that, which, again, I think is what makes Destiny so special is the in-game stuff. It are the raids, the nightfalls, you know, the, you know, like when I hell when I fought Skolas for like two weeks back in the day during House of Wolves. Those are the memories that I have because it forces us to communicate. And again, talking about the lock loadouts, think about trials with that on the PV, PVP side. You know, you know, everyone has to go in there with a locked loadout. You can inspect to see what the other team has. So you know what's coming. No one's changing on the fly. I think it's just going to create such intense encounters by doing that because you're going to have to pre-plan. You know, you can't go in and have dim on your iPad and you're, you're swapping weapons on the fly. You know what I mean? Whatever you have is what you have. So I'm really excited to see this. Can't wait to find out more information. But again, I'm not going to get into too many crazy specifics, but like I said, that IGN uh, first video with Luke Smith and Mark Noseworthy, they just kind of went over their vision of what they want Destiny 2 to be. And I'm very excited for it because it's what I want Destiny to be. I want it to be this this social place where, you know, I'm going to meet so many new people and make so many new friends for life. I think that's kind of the key thing. And when, and it's already happened with Destiny 1. That's why I keep coming back to this game. I've met so many new amazing people and that I can call friends now, you know, and then like going to that Destiny 2 reveal and actually putting that face to the name of these people that I've been playing with for the past three years was such an amazing experience. And that even carried over to E3 and hopefully next year I'll get to go to guardian con and meet even more amazing people that are part of this community. So I'm excited to see this direction that they're going, you know, everything, the changes that they're making sound scary because we don't know what they are hundred percent yet. And Luke even went into that talking about, there's certain things they don't want to talk about because they want us to be surprised by them. And I want to be surprised too. I really do. I want to be surprised. I don't want to know everything going into September 6th, but you know, let's see how it plays out with, with the static weapon rolls. Let's see how it plays out with the four V four PVP PVP. Now, even though I'm not necessarily a huge fan of it, but I'm willing to give it a chance. How are these treasure maps going to work? How is the lost sectors going to work? How is the dynamic and, ever evolving farm social space going to work how is guided games going to work it's it's all these things that i want to know about so i'm super excited for this i can't wait i've probably been talking way too much at this point so let me go ahead and end this thank you guys for watching this video i really appreciate it again if you like the content that i'm doing please give me a thumbs up if you love what i'm doing please subscribe to this channel. I want to keep growing it. I want to keep doing videos like this because I think it's so much fun. So again, this is Paris. Thank you guys for watching. I will talk to you soon.